you ready? Okay, so uh, welcome to the Modern Music King Show. We're in a distance learning uh, studio at Carnegie Mellon University, and we're still trying to figure out how to use. We hopefully we'll be utilizing some of these uh, technologies in future episodes. Today we have a three questions with with Megan Grady, who's the head of uh, recruiting and enrollment, and uh, I get a uh, another trombone lesson from Malik. We hope you enjoy it. I'm Megan Grady, and I'm the Director of Recruitment and Enrollment in the School of Music at Carnegie Mellon University. Are you ready for your first question? Yes. Question one. What's your favorite piece of music and why? I think my favorite piece of music is um, a clarinet piece that I got to perform on a international tour with a, another university ensemble called Black Dog by Scott McAllister. Um, and I think that's become my favorite piece because it really stretches what I have to do as a musician, but also because I got to play it in a bullfighting ring in Spain, and that was pretty cool. So that's a memorable one for me. That's a good answer. The next question, what is, you can choose your own adventure here. What's your favorite part of your job or what's your favorite part about being a musician or being involved with music? I think my favorite part of my job is connecting with students and their families and helping them determine what the best path forward for them is going to be, whether that's related to Carnegie Mellon or music or none of the above, um, but just advising and working with students on their futures. Um, I think that's really what I enjoy most. The next question is, can you <clears throat> name uh, a mentor and explain what they, what kind of an influence they've had on you? Yeah, so probably my greatest mentor thus far has been um, Dr. Deborah Bish, who was my clarinet professor in graduate school. And um, she was very tough on me while I was a student there, both as a musician, but also as becoming kind of on the administrative side and how to navigate certain things. And I didn't always understand the lessons in the moment, but in the almost 10 years since I've graduated, I've really benefited from a lot of the advice and wisdom that she imparted onto me as a musician and a person. Okay, next up on Lance Learns to Play, this is Malik. He's going to give me my third lesson on the trombone. So you'll remember this is the slide, this is the mouthpiece, this is the bell. Last time we learned about buzzing on the mouthpiece, so buzzing high and low and then articulating with the tongue. So, or a T sound or a D sound, right? Ta sound. Ta sound. For your articulate tongue. A D sound's good for a softer. Okay, perfect. So, But today, now we're going to deploy... This fine thing. Yes, so yes. this here is the slide. One the of the slide. things about the trombone that's different from a lot of instruments is that we don't have a lot of buttons. So I have you, zero buttons. Well, I have, have one. You have one little, you know. Button ish. You know, a little water key. You know, a lot of people like valve. to say if you're in middle school, they'll probably say ew because you need to let out some water mm -hmm. every once in a while. But um, so what we have is a slide, and on the slide, teachers and bands like to say there's seven positions. That's relative, I'll just say that right now, because your life will be ruined if you think there's seven, and then you get in high school, and they're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's relatively seven positions. The first position is directly in, just completely in. All the way in. Yes, all the way in. So the slide is unlocked. Mm -hmm. We learned the one time that the slide can be locked so that if you're walking around, you don't drop it. Indeed. What? And then, actually, what happens? So if I take the slide all the way off, what is it? Oh, look at there. Mm -hmm. So, and then do I need to know anything? Should I have done this? Is this a terrible idea? Uh, it's not trouble? a terrible idea. Do I need idea. to call the authorities? <laughs> it's right. not absolutely a horrible idea. All you got to do is put it back on. But do be careful because if you sorry. do bend your inner slide, then... This is the inner slide. Yes, this is the inner slide, and this is the outer slide. And if, if you, you do bend it, bend either your inner or outer slide, you'll start to get a bumpy ride, and that's no fun. And this needs to be as smooth as possible yes, so that you can get around the instrument. Indeed. Okay, gotcha. So the first position is completely in. Uh, the second position is about halfway between first and the bell, is what people generally Okay, so say. first position is here, yep. and then halfway between here yeah, and just the about bell. There. So between here position. and here is second position, mm -hmm. all right? And that lowers the instrument. So basically, 
if you're playing a brass instrument, mm -hmm. um, you want to ex make the instrument longer. Yes. To go lower. Yes. Right. And so we're extending the instrument this distance, mm -hmm. uh, and that would lower the pitch by how much? It will lower it by a semitone. A semitone. Okay. Yep. So or a half step, half step. for a more right. simple thing. So you'll have a B flat here. Play there was a B flat to an A natural. And then what happens if I don't want that uh, to happen? Then you can simply uh, you can use your tongue to lightly disrupt your air when you're going in between the first and second, and move in a quick fashion so that you don't get the slidey motion. Uh, it can be an articulate tongue or a legato tongue. It so it's a little effect. smoother. Yeah, it's a little smoother with the legato. Tongue. And so the slide needs to move quickly. The tongue needs to move at the exact same time that the slide is moving. Yes. Right? So yes, your so, so by the time you rearticulate your next note, you should already be in that position. Otherwise, you'll get a little buzz or I something's see. off. Okay. So back to the we're going to change from uh, note to note. So now we are yep second. So the third position is right at the bell or just a touch above it. So at the so we've gone from first position mm -hmm. to second position. Now so third now position third, yeah. is at the bell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going down chromatically. We so are. we're going down half steps at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And then fourth position is just a little bit out from the bell. So is it the same distance? So we have a di we're halfway between mm -hmm. here and here. Is it the same distance on the other side of the bell for fourth position? Or does it start to get... It's, as you go out on the trombone, the positions start to get a little bit smaller in distance. Like the first is a literal giant <coughs> step. But then from the bell, you only want to go just so a little each bit Each subsequent it. step is slightly yeah, less. slightly less than the previous one. Mm -hmm. So that's the G, which means this is A flat, A, B flat. Mm -hmm. Fifth position is no man's land. This is the hardest position on the trombone, honestly. Even professionals still kind of struggle with this position. It's a little bit out from the bell, but just a little farther out, about here. So there's five positions. Is that all the positions? No, it is not. Okay, so how many more positions there are there? There are two more positions okay. just about left on the trombone. So from the fifth, we go out to six. And that's where we start to stretch out a little bit. The seventh position, which separates the real trombone players from the fake ones, because if your arms aren't long enough, you're kind of screwed. The seventh position is really, really far out. You'll so if your arm's not long enough, you're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, yes. you're in a little bit of trouble. Okay. So, <laughs> so the seventh position, uh, if you, my slide is pretty condensed in here, but there's little marks on this slide that will that you can see at the end. Oh, of I see. Yeah, and when yeah, you go right past here. that, that's pretty much seventh position. Oh. As you saw, even with me, it can be very difficult to come up from seven to first mm -hmm. because six and fifth aren't really just sort of just no reference point because you know first, second, third is easy. So know? where are your reference points? So my reference points for first, second, and third. First is of course directly in. Oh, I see. Um, second is half sure. in the bell. Third is the bell. Fourth is slightly out. For fifth position, I like to think just a little bit more out from four. So just think of four like right here and just fifth. <laughs> And then six is a little bit farther out from fifth. And then seven is all the way out. All right, so that's how the slide works. Mm -hmm. That's Malik. That's a slide. That's, that's a, I am Lance. That's true. We both have trombones. Yours has the F attachment. It allows you to play the C but not the B. Mm -hmm. I'll have to write all this down. I'm not going to remember. Thank you very much.
Hi, my name's Ethan, and I want to talk about Arnold Jacobs today. So Arnold Jacobs uh, was a tuba player. Um, he studied at the Curtis Institute of Music, and he actually spent some time in Pittsburgh here. He was part of the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra when Fritz Reiner was the music director. Um, but he's most known for his work with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, which he got that job in 1944, and then he uh, retired in uh, 1988, I think. Um, and he was really famous for uh, furthering um, brass pedagogy. Um, so his big thing was he was he was like all about the air. So he was all about um, using your air and making it really forward and using it to really make music, which I think is a really good approach. And that um, helps me a lot when I play the tuba. <laughs> That's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I looking? Why are you over there now? <laughs> are you gonna ask me? Yes. Oh. I, sure. What do you think, Matthew? Uh, it's you learning a lot about the trauma? <coughs> oh yes, oh yes. Okay. Actually, actually more than my high school friend taught me, which is saying something. Wow. <laughs> Piccolo's to play in tune. How? You shoot one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this is awesome. This is gonna be fun. This is really. How long's a minute? Yes. It's exactly it's exactly minute long. Long. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep turning around and look at the clock. Just in the middle. Of yeah. Well, I feel Here. like I'm gonna run out of stuff to say because, like, I don't want to be six like. Seconds seconds on that one. <laughs> Are you gonna do that throughout three. the whole video? Do you, wanna, do you wanna borrow my watch? Hey, thanks for watching the show. If you want to reach us with questions or comments, you can figure out all the ways to do that by clicking on any of those links in wherever you're watching this thing. We've had a great time putting these together and hope you find them useful as well. Thanks for watching.